It's about the foals and the people, the breeders and producers, the vendors, the speculators and purchasers who spot an individual, its confirmation, its presence, its movement, an opportunity, a speck. At the venue where history tells us tomorrow begins, the winners of 15 gold cups, of 10 grand nationals and of four champion hurdles have been found as foals at these sales. From the supreme dawn run to the magnificent best mate and the sublime Constitution Hill, a long and illustrious alumni. Constitution Hill, one of the hurdling greats, ease close home, Constitution Hill, simply breathtaking, wins the champion hurdling a rout. It's what Tattersall's Island November National Hunt Sale is about. So who caught the eye this week and why? With nine foals fetching 80,000 or more, up from four a year ago, and over 40 making 50,000, another significant increase, the quality was well received. Morris Barry's Ballycanelli stables consigned a lovely colt by Blue Brazil from the Harbour Pilot family. There was keen demand, with Cahal Mariga winning the battle at 97,000. He's been a lovely foal since day one. He's just been a dream to deal with. He was just, his temperament is beautiful. Um, all along Prepium, he's just been a lovely, lovely foal, so we're, we're delighted with him. What were your expectations? Look, we knew coming up here he was a very good foal, and all day he had about 120 shows today, all the right people were on him. So look, we knew he'd go well, but we didn't think he was going to make that kind of money. And, and we're delighted as well, he's gone to uh, the Mariga family, Cool Mara Stables, they're neighbours of ours. Yeah, we saw him during the summer, he was only bred 15 minutes over the road from us. We saw him a few weeks ago again, so I thought he was one of the best falls in the sale, really. So many people wanted him. Yeah, there was a lot of bidders on him. Um, it got fairly hectic inside there, but... <laughs> Paul Cashman, I think you're under bid. Yeah, sure, Blue Brazil's there, hot this week, so... We didn't didn't expect much less from him, but yeah, he made a great price. We're delighted for Massey, so... Cahill, what will you do with him now? I will bring him back, hopefully, here in three years' time for the Derby sale, and hopefully he can develop into a, a nice six-figure horse. Cahill's Cool Mara Stables was the vendor this time of another Blue Brazil to catch the eye. This was the filly out of a half-sister to Big Bucks, and she's bound for France, Nikki de Belanda signing at 85,000. Well, she was, she was obvious, she was, she's very good looking, big filly. She has the page, she has the stallion, um, and hopefully she'll be good, but uh, yeah, we're, we're glad to, to have her, yeah. Nathaniel's two representatives both made an impact, not surprisingly. First in was Caroline Berry's colt, the first foal of a good winning ware she'd found in France. And he returns north, Ian Ferguson emerging on top at 85,000. I'm absolutely delighted. We are very excited about him coming here, but he has exceeded all expectations. Tell me a little bit about him. He was bought in France. Um, I was very friendly with David Powell, and he said there's a mare I really think you should take an interest in. So, rest is history. We brought her home. And I have a good friend, Jane McGivern, who had a Nathaniel nomination that she wasn't going to use that year, and she was kind enough to let me take it. And um, the mare went over, went straight in foal, and this was the result. The second Nathaniel was submitted by Will Kinsey's Peel Hall Stables, a son of the wonderful Limini. There was huge interest in the striking chestnut, with Nicky de Belanda again victorious. 90,000 the price. He showed all day, uh, and the lovely, another lovely foal from the mare. 90,000, and you bought Limini, what, four years ago in this arena? We bought her here, yeah. I remember flying home and then flying back to buy her. Uh, and she was actually the very first mare that we bought for a, a new sort of business partnership called Future Bloodstock. So uh, she is the found, founder mare of, 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 of all the trouble, I suppose, yeah. Denise O'Brien is another top consigner, and her Clon Bonnie stud submitted the only cap guard in the catalogue in Cahill Ennis's cult, the first produce of a winning Yates mare. At 92,000, this fella fell to Jamie Codd. He's another stellar foal we'll hope to see back here. He went down very well. Everybody saw him in the place. Showed every time he showed the exact same as the first show. You consigned him for a long-standing client? Yeah, a um, man from Mullingar called Cahill Ennis. He consigns a few of me every year. And oh, he's a very good breeder. Frank Motherway has bred some wonderful jumpers, Bells Hill amongst them. 
Frank's Yellowford farm was the week's top consigner, nine foals fetching 50,000 or more. And tops was the blue Brazil coat out of a half-sister to Pell's Hill that fell to Kevin Ross and Ben Case for 88,000. He was very good fall. We thought we'd be sort of not a 50, but to get 88 was brilliant. Tell me about him. I said he's, uh, he's out of, of my old, old family. Um, si since the catalogue was printed, he, the family got a good lift because Union Hill won his point to point first time out for Wilson Dennison, and that gave it a new lift again. He's from the family of Belsale, which is a great family that, that, that I bred Belsale, and this is, he, his, his, the dam of this fall is a half sister to him, so pedigree was strong, and the fall has looked apart and it worked out really well. Oliver Lachlan is another wise man. Three years ago in this arena, he reinvested in a mare he'd bred, Posh Trish. He's been well rewarded. 85,000 for her first foal 12 months ago, this time six figures for her colt by Walk in the Park, signed for by Jerry Ahern. We hit the jackpot this morning at around 11 o'clock because it's made a fairy tale from the start since we bought the mare back three years ago. Uh, we got 85 last year and 100, 100 this time. But since the foal was born, the day after the, fall, the mare foal, this place stood up in the house and walked out and I said, this is my dream this year, as it is. It's very easy to notice a horse like him when he pulls out of a stable, so delighted to get him. Delighted He's been knocked down to yourself and, and Charles Shanahan. Yeah, Charles and, and, and Paul, they're, they're involved as well, and, and there's actually a big team of people involved in it, so the plan is fluid enough where we're going to go or what we're going to do, but with him, be it if he comes back here to be sold at a derby sale or whether we go racing, it's exciting either way. Simon, the end of a, of a huge week for our national hunt breeders, for everyone who deals in young stock and for the company. Your thoughts? I think a really good week all in all, Robert. Um, some great demand for those top end foals and uh, some really happy vendors, some really, really happy purchasers and uh, some real fun on the rostrum there for a few days. Nine foals made 80,000 or more. That's up from four a year ago. And uh, 40, more than 40, made 50,000 or more. Another significant increase. Yeah, that, that was a surprise. I mean, we, we thought the demand would be strong for foals as it always is, but the demand as it was was hugely surprising. I mean, no one would have predicted that we'd have had so many foals make over 50,000. And uh, it's great to see, you know, great to see happy customers throughout the few days. Um, there was definitely a select nature to the market. There's a polarisation when it comes to stallions. That has been referenced in, for years about the polarisation of the market when it comes to a certain number of stallions. But it was good to see a few young stallions uh, do quite well over the few days. And um, that gives a, a Philip, I suppose, or a boost to some of the younger stallions coming into the market. The select nature of the market, I think, has to be highlighted. As I said, yearlings and mares were, were a struggle. We'll certainly look at the format of yearlings next year. I think the alphabetical by dam system really, really worked well. Um, this is the first time in the company's history that we went alphabetically by dam, so purchasers got the hang of going around the barns. Probably was more challenging for them to see horses, but the Alpha by Dam system worked really, really well. Simon, it's been a, a big, big year. The Derby sale, five horses made 200,000 or more. A record top price, 265 for the top one. Yeah, the, again, brilliant, brilliant sale. We were thrilled with it. And, uh, you know, of course, next year, it's the 50th uh, Derby sale. So uh, 50 years of the Derby sale, who would have thought? And uh, we're really, really looking forward to it. And there's some um, great ideas and initiatives going to be launched in the new year, so uh, that exciting times ahead. We look forward to it.